What counts in life is not the mere fact that we've lived. It's what difference we have made to the lives of others. That will determine the significance of the life that we lead. Nelson Mandela. I never got to meet him. I never got to see him. I never got to speak to him. But he touched my life in more ways than one. You see, Nelson Mandela has always been a paragon of a true man of character to me. It was sometime between 2001 and 2003 when I was struggling with fitting into middle school, into this new culture with new demographics. And prior to this, I had never gone to school with people of different races. So you can imagine the amount of culture shock and inferiority complex that I was feeling back then. Constant thoughts of, am I good enough to be amongst people? What do I have to offer? Crept in the back of my mind. I remember repeatedly going home and feeling despondent because of how odd I felt. I remember my mom saying to me, you're just as good as any of them, Tyo. And yes, that made me feel better. But those good feelings were always ephemeral. You know, then I stumbled upon this biography uh, of Nelson Mandela. And the rest, as they say, was history. I would go on to read on him, study him. And every time I did, I kept coming back to one number. The number 27. Yes, 27. How can one man spend that many years in prison and not give up on his dream of seeing a united South Africa? How can he not feel hate after that? I would constantly say these things to myself and, and, and then marvel at the fact that he did. Because you see, instead, he did the opposite. As you all know, he sacrificed himself for what he believed in and for the greater good of his country. Even now, at the age of 25, I still haven't lived as long as he was in prison. And that's insane. I mean, that's, that's just crazy to think about. I, I've been on earth longer, um, less than he had spent in prison. And I always come back to this. He must have had, you know, incredible uh, internal strength, inner strength, and the faith to keep pushing uh, through that. And that resonated with me. You know, all of a sudden... I had faith to push through all those years of uh, of, feeling, of loneliness that I felt. Um, and I understood that if we understood our life's purpose and remain steadfast in our approach, nothing can dampen our light. I realized then, as a person, that I had just as much to offer as anyone. Another important thing happened to me then, though. You know, my life's mission was established. Yeah, my life's mission uh, essentially became to leave this world a better place than it was before I came into it. And it grew, it has since become to develop the next set of global leaders. Armed with this knowledge, I started to learn as much as I could from him. And here are five things he taught me. One, strength and courage. Mandela once said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. He taught me that it was okay to be imperfect because of our imperfections. You know, our imperfections make us who we are. We just need to be brave enough to pick ourselves up every single time we fall. Because after all, once we're down, the only way is up. Second thing, the power of sports. It's no secret anyone watching this um, or most of my friends and family know that I'm a huge sports fan. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as being a fanatic, but I'm, I'm a very, very um, huge sports fan and I love my, my players and my sports teams. But few people know to what depth my fandom goes to and why. I love sports for much more than the enjoyment factor of it. I believe sports 
you know, is one of the biggest equalizers in our world today. I, 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 th I think it has the power to bring many people together, unique, uh, uh, unite them, not unite, <laughs> unite them in as many amazing ways as, pop as possible. And if you don't believe me, look at the recent World Cup, you know, and then the upcoming Olympics, and just, just watch as, as groups of people are banded together and, and you know, just laughing and, and sharing the joys of their favorite country or favorite region. In my country, Nigeria, there are constant rifts between ethnic groups, but whenever the African Nations Cup is on, yeah, that seems to be gone. And every ethnic group is hugging each other, and, uh, you know, um, all seems to be well. Another example of this comes to comes from uh, Mandela himself. During the 1995 Rugby World Cup, um, he surprised a predominantly white, uh, white, well, white, but white uh, crowd by shaking the hands of all the South African players while wearing the national Springbok jersey. Now, instead of the animosity that one had come to expect in South Africa during that period between white and black people, the stadium erupted with chants of "Now, son, now, son." Now, son. That was such a powerful moment. And if um, if you want more, a more visual representation of what I'm saying, you should go watch uh, Invictus. It's the movie with the uh, um, Matt Damon and um, Morgan Freeman. I think uh, you know that really represents everything I'm saying. The third thing I learned from him was empathy. Um, was equality. Sorry, equality. No one is better than any other person. As I said earlier, I had a moment in my life when I had an inferiority complex because I was thrust into an environment with people of different races. Uh, you know, once I broke down the walls of insecurity, I surrounded myself, uh, you know, I had surrounded myself with in middle school, I realized that I just as much to offer as anyone else. But ask me now what my pet peeve is. And I'll tell you without hesitation, it's racism and condescending behavior. No one is born hating another person because of the color of the skin or, or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. Nelson Mandela said that. And that's something that I hope um, we all take knowledge of it. We all start to really put it and implement into our lives because, you know, racial divide that, that's starting to happen again and starting to happen, it's really unnecessary. We're all people. And if we must look through the lens of a race, let's call each other the human race. The fourth thing I learned from Mr. Mandela was self-belief. As Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. That's really all that needs to be said. I mean, I found consistently that I've surprised myself when I've adopted this mantra. Um, a lot of things that have come out this year have been a result of just me daring to, you know, to just dream. And whether it's, you know, UID, mag.com, or the Is Told by Nomads podcast, um, a lot of these things I didn't even think I could do a year prior or, or two weeks prior. But um, with a certain burst of inspiration and uh, innate belief in myself, I was able to actually implement them. And um, I surprised myself. Believe in yourself, and the power of your ability, and you never know what can happen. If you fail, you just know another way not to do something. The last thing I learned from Mandela huh, is the power of education. You know, while I believe that sports is you know, one of the biggest equalizers in the world, my opinion is that education is the greatest equalizer. And that's why I'm always striving to educate everyone about you know, the power of different cultures and what it's like to live in different cultures and the ability for each of us to think outside of the box. Because I think 
for the next set of global leaders to be built, um, they really have to have a deep understanding of, of, of what it takes to live in, in today's world. Um, I mean, millennials are the most diverse generation. And um, it's really high time we, we understand that diversity. <sighs> Education comes in all forms, you know, whether it's via documentaries, reading books, traveling the world. It's something that, um, that can be used as the greatest weapon to bridge cultural gaps and, and racial divide. So I want to encourage everyone out there to, to go out and explore um, just what your environment is. You never know what can come out of that. I loved Nelson Mandela as much as anyone could love anyone from afar. You know, and, and as an African, he meant a lot to me and my beloved continent. You know, he paved the way for, for people all over the world to appreciate the continent, people's characters, instead of the outward appearances. An icon was lost last year. A legend was lost. And this is my way of, of you know, carrying on his legacy. I don't want all that he stood for to go away in the dust. I think we as a society need to do better. And in light of, you know, the recent circumstances and recent violence and, and things that have been happening, um, I want us to all look within and see as a society where we want our kids, our friends, our family to live in. Let's strive to understand each other and let's strive to use our differences to make a difference. Rest in peace, sir.